ंगलाक्त निगिन कामदम मोक्षदम चाय नमो नम नमो समय साराय स्वानुभूत चाशते चित्सभावाय भावाय सर्वभावाचिदे अज्ञानतिरंदा ज्ञान अंजन शलाकया चक्षुर मिलत तस्म श्री गुरव नम तीर्थंकर जगतना जयवंतवर्त ओंकार नाद जिनो जयवंतवर्त जिनना समो शरण सौ जयवंतवर्त ने तीर्थचार जगमा जयवंतवर्त नमो वे तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगरोतेणे नमो ते श्री कुंद कुंद ने औ उपकार जिन वर्णो कुंदनो ध्वनि दिव्य नो जीन कुंद ध्वनि आप्या अहो ते गुरु काननो अहो ते भगवती मातनो ध्रुव अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे सीध ने वंदी कहो सुत केवली भाषित आसमय प्राव्रत अरे हूँ एक सुध सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय खरे कई अन्य ते मारु जरी परमाणु मात्र न थी अरे जम नेत्र ते मज ज्ञान न थी कारक न थी वेदक अरे जानी ज करमोदय निरजरा बंद ते मज मोक्ष ने ओम नमः सिद्धिव्यो ओम नमः सिद्धिव्यो ओम सुदात्मा ने नमः <coughs> Jai Jinendra, everybody. Uh, so here we are. We are going to start. So my son, son, I want to fly. <coughs> okay. So what we have done so far, we have finished. Uh, uh stanza 1 to stanza 5 we have gone in great 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 details about each stanza so not to get kind of confused or get lost into the so much information that uh, i think it's better we just make exactly what in short all this five stanza tells us what they want to impart knowledge to us so we will just go through it more you already know those thing you are already expert in this one you already are aware of those thing but just to tie up whole whole thing it is better we just revise because as i said six tanja is a really a big big jump coming on, on, uh, until so far what we have done practically it's nothing when we come to six tanja Six to fourteen stanza. Basically, those are the heart of the samay sar. And for that thing, we just have to make sure that uh, uh, our base is becoming solid. We already know what we have learned so far and everything. So we'll go from stanza one to five. 
it, it in short will be going you already know about it we may not have much much to add and if there is any question coming please throw it to me so we can also uh, discuss that that question too <clears throat> so for some sir sri acharya kund kund dev says that uh, one who reads and assimilates its message that means practice is, is its inherent nature of the eternal soul will definitely obtain truth and will attain supreme bliss this is the last stanza that uh, 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 kun kun swami writes in stanza 415 in that when he says whatever so far i have talked about all this thing that what i talk about that you one reads and as if simply reading means nothing i can read out everything i can read the story book and everything but assimilation think about it we go to watch a movie we come out of the movie we enjoy the movie we get engrossed in the movie and when we come back we remember scene after scene after scene oh my god that was very good scene this was very nice thing so those are called assimilation because i had a liking for the movie and then i enjoyed it and now i am just just uh, assimilating that part similarly when we are reading the scripture it's not simply just for the sake of reading scripture alone but while reading whatever the message is there that i try to assimilate that message there are four anuyogs four types of expositions in the scripture means all of our scriptures are so wide and huge numbers that they are divided into four different part storytelling scripture prathmana yog conduct related scripture uh charna yog uh pure mathematics or karna yog in hardcore philosophy metaphysics that is called dravya yog all these four types of a major division of the scriptures only one one and one and one aim only and that is to obtain vitrakta to obtain passionless state if any of the scripture doesn't lead me to that state that means they are not the right scripture for me even if i read the story of lord mahavir simple thing that you know when I mean, he was marichi and he was arrogant and everything and then marichi became mahavir and all the journey when we read that one that tells us that you know there is no way i can be arrogant mahavir's life teaches me something like that so what what over here is when i read i have to assimilate i have to take the message and what's the message central message in all the scripture is how can i uh, get engrossed in my inherent nature of this soul and once i get engrossed that will ultimately give me supreme bliss and that's what kun kun swami say that one has to read the scripture that way millions of scriptures message is included in samesha if we if we digest the samesha alone then there is a uh, millions of scriptures scriptural message is included in this one one second okay. then now it's a cow of plenty and a wish wish fulfilling tree in the scripture there is something called kamdenu and kalpa vruksha comes kam denu means it's a cow of plenty means you you ask for it and you get it same thing kalpa vruksha you have wish something and your wish get fulfilled so this samesha is kam denu and kalpa vruksha for the aspirant soul the soul who has obtained um, right faith this this scriptures will take him all the way to the liberation state 
this description the description of eternal pure nature of the soul through which one can obtain right faith right knowledge and right conduct this is what samaisa keeps on telling that's what kunkun tells us tells us that this is what i'm going to talk to you about now now then it, right away he starts with the word samai and uh, <clears throat> what that samai means samai means you know, let me just slow down this okay samai means it, it's called time it's also used word is also used for country for the area scripture opinion war etc samai is used in multiple multiple different ways over here what samai is used as follows the two words in summary some and i some means with along with and i means to move or to know i means to move that means to transform or to know knowing is also called i so one which transforms one moves means transforms one which transforms then who are those things all the six universal substances they transform every every summit every moment they keep on changing keep on changing i'm the soul i'm doing rag dwesh krodh man maya lob anger deceit ego greed all kind of thing every moment i keep on doing similarly matter particle also keep on doing the same thing every moment matter particle they keep on changing same thing happens in the medium of motion medium of rays um, uh, uh, a space and time all six universal substances keeps on transforming so one meaning for samai will be all the universal substances the other one means one which transforms as well as knows and that means soul so here uh, kun kun acharya wants us to say that when i say samai that means one which transforms and one which knows the rest of the five substances they have no capacity to know so samai means uh, uh, soul samai means six substances or it could be it means soul also now and now when we say samai means all six universal substances then sar means the best samai sa we are coming to the definition of samai sa samai if it if it means all six substances then sar means the best that means the best in the six substances is the soul so that's what i'm going to go for soul right then if samai means the soul now second meaning over here we take samai means the six substances but if we just say samai means the soul then sar means the soul without material psychic and quasi karma means dravya karma bhav karma no karma rahit we have only gone through definition quickly we can just go go through it dravya karma means all i think it comes next slide i think okay yeah knowledge obscuring karma etc 140 types for 148 types are called material karma now material karmas are divided into 148 types and we can just go on and on and on and on for those 148 but important thing is the material karma the non living i have only associative relation relationship with them karma cannot do anything to me i cannot do anything to karma that kind of information or idea when i have it it is so the thing becomes very uh, uh, superfluous thing inclusion of attachment and aversion means rag and dwesh are known as bhav karma why bhav bhav karma means it is occurring within me i'm the soul this this phone cannot have the capacity to know this pen has no capacity to know it's only me living soul one with the consciousness can do the rag and dwesh and that's why it's called bhav karma we have to remember this word whenever the word bhav comes that means it is occurring into the 
uh, uh, into the soul. For example, word bhav pap, bhav punyam, bhav karma, bhav astra, bhav band, bhav samvar, bhav nijra, bhav moksh. All those things means action occurring in the soul in the form of I'm making my pap bhav. I'm making inauspicious feeling within me. I'm making auspicious feeling within me. Punya, bhav punya. I'm doing, I, 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 I'm doing rag and vesh within me. It's a bhav ashra. I have intensity of rag and vesh within me. That's a bhav ban. I, 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 I had a purity starting within me. It's a bhav samvar. It's a, my purity keeps on increasing. Bhav nijra. My purity is complete. Bow moksh. So everything occurring in this soul is it will be denoted with a bow. So we have to keep that one in mind. On the against thing is material, dravya, dravya karma or material karma means everything happens in the matter particles which I am not responsible for. That I I I I am the soul. My area of expertise remains within my limited soul's capacity. Where my, my area of the soul, my, my, my attributes, my modes, my actions are limited up to there. So, material karma, dravya karma, bhav karma means a ragvesh and physical body, spouse, kids, house, etc. that they all call quasi-karma. So, in Samasar, this pure nature of the soul is described, which is the word of material, psychic, and quasi-karma. So, this is what Samasar starts with. Now, to have conviction that I have self-identification means Atmiyata. With the eternal pure nature of the soul, without material, psychic and quasi-karma, is the right fit. This is a definition of Samyak Darshan. When do I get Samyak Darshan? It's not that I did so much upvas. It's not that I did so much donation. It's not that I observe so much uh, uh, worshipping and everything. No. When I have self-identification with my eternal true nature, the, which is without material psychic and quasi-karma, as we described in previous slide, that is right faith. Samyak darshan, but that's it. So this is Samyak darshan. Do I have this one? No, then I don't have Samyak darshan. And if I don't have it, then I should, this is the only the way to get the Samyak Darshan. This is only the way to achieve Samyak Darshan. And that's what Tattva Sutra, Adhyay 1, Chapter 1, Sutra 1, it will just say, Samyak, gnan, samyak Darshan Gnan Charitrani Hi Moksh Margaha. Means Samyak Darshan is the first thing he talks about. Umaswati Ji, Acharya Ji says, Samyak Darshan is most important. How will I get it? By having uh, self-identification by getting engrossed in my true nature of the soul that will be my Samyak Darshan. Now, so we are coming to the first stanza. What does first stanza say? It, first stanza is always, one or two stanzas are always in any scripture will be invocation of blessing. Whenever the Acharya Bhagwan writes a, a, a scripture, first thing he will say, who is the who is the instigator for him to write? How he is writing? What is the subject matter? All those things are included in the invocation or in invocation of blessing. So over here, Acharya Kunkun Swami says, bowing down, I'm bowing down to all the siddhas who have attained the state of existence, permanence, immutability and incomparability. And I'm writing this Samay Pahud, means scripture Samasar, which has been narrated by all knowing masters of scripture. See, it's important thing, simple three lines, so many things uh, um, um, Acharya Bhagwan wants to say. First thing he says that I'm buying down to Siddha means my aim is Siddha. My aim is liberation. 
So you want liberation? This is the first time I'm telling you. I'm going to talk about liberation. If you are interested, keep reading further. If you are not, you can get up. Then I wrote down this Samipahu name, name of the scripture, <clears throat> which has been narrated by all knowing masters of the scripture, means my guru and his guru and Tirthankar Bhagwan, they already have narrated. And that's what I'm going to repeat. I'm going to talk in my own language with my experience. So this is the first stanza he says, in which he tells us what exactly he's going, to, he's going to talk about. As soon as he finishes first stanza, we just probably, we are just trying to digest what, what uh, Acharya Bhagwan uh, wants to tell. Right away, he goes to the, to the, 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 the center of the subject and says, one who is engrossed in the right faith, knowledge and conduct is engrossed in the self, means Swasamai. He differentiates Swasamai and Parsamai. Samai means Atma, Samai means soul. When I'm getting engrossed in my right faith, knowledge and conduct, means I'm engrossed in myself. Swasamai. Soul end up with altered state when direct his at at attention to material karma and karma's fruition. He therefore is without knowledge of the self, he's engrossed in non-self persame. So right away he defines two broad categories of these souls. Those who are engrossed into their into their innate nature, and those who are engrossed in the alien belongings. So, faith attribute, the faith attribute, samyak darshan, either it could be samyak darshan or it could be mithya darshan. So, right away in the second stanza, Acharya Bhagwan divides mithya darshan against samyak darshan. This is samyak darshan and this is mithya darshan. Mithya darshan means I have an interest in the alien objects of the universe. This is my phone and I love it. Or this is my phone, I don't like it, I have to have a new one. So these are kind of a, I put my nest to the, I, 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 I put my, my, my wish, I impose on these objects. And that's why I'm trying to look for the happiness from the material objects. And that is a wrong thing. And that is called mithyatva or that is called parsamai. When I get engrossed within, it's called swasamai. So right away he divides it to Swasamai, Parsamai. When one removes the notion of self and non-self, then only the thing remains is Samai. See, now, again, he is very, very particular telling us that even, even I'm getting engrossed in the outside material things, or I'm getting engrossed within myself, Swasamai, Parsamai, but they are also modes, modes in nature. They are the pariya, they are modifications. And my eternal true nature is constant. There is no modification. So here, take the example of the gold. I had the gold. I took the, uh, I went to the mine and I got the dirt and there was a, there's a gold mixed with the dirt. So I bring it home, I work on that gold dust, dust with the gold, and then I pass through the process of a purification with the fire, etc. And gold becomes one side, dirt becomes the other side, and I throw the dirt out, keep the gold with me. <clears throat> now that I have the gold, I make the chain out of it, I make necklace out of it, I make ring out of it. All the chain, necklace, ring, etc. are gold's modification. But in whole, all the chain, necklace, ring, etc., everywhere, gold is a gold, is a gold, is a gold. In the mine, mixed with the dirt, it was a gold. Pure, 100% gold coin is a gold. The, 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 the uh, ring is a gold. Necklace is a gold. All those things are gold. Gold is a gold, is a gold. So, Samai is a Samai. When you take Par Samai and Swasamai out, that means whatever remains is me, my pure nature. That's what I am. 
So that's what he's taking. This is the second stanza. And Kun Kun Swami really, really works very, very hard. He doesn't want to just fool around anywhere else. He just goes to the center of the problem to tell us what to do. This summary is exactly the same. This summary is exactly the same, starting from Nigod all the way to liberated soul. Means <clears throat> eternal true nature of the self is the same in Nigod, is same in the liberated soul, and same in between all these uh, uh, four realms of existence. So this is the summary that I'm going to talk about, he says. Then once he says Swasamai, Parsamai, Mithyatvan, Samyaktva, he just, just makes us think about it. Now he says what is happening. Upon getting engrossed in the alien, alien beings, there is deprivation of the uh, deprivation of the deprivation of the true self, therefore duality is generated. Look, I'm looking outside material thing. This one, I love it. This one, I love it. This one, I may not like it. So I am just getting engrossed in the alien belongings. And when I'm looking at the alien belonging, that means I'm not looking at my true self. The vision can be either either, poor, either to the alien object or to me, towards me only. Two things only can have, one thing only can happen out of two situations. Either my vision is uh, uh, engrossed in the alien belongings, all those things that I have in front of me that I have, I have likes or dislikes, or I'm just engrossed within myself. That's it. So when I'm looking outside, then the duality is generated. Object and me. Two things are there. So duality is generated. And over here, this stanza shows the problem with this duality nature. So second stanza, he said, that there is a parsamai and swasamai. Now he says, when I'm in the parsamai, there is duality is uh, generated. And this duality has a problem. What kind of problem? A substance having solitariness with the self has the beauty of its own in the universe. Anything in the, any substance of the universe, when that substance is engrossed within, then it's a beautiful thing. Now, or, or solitariness, ekatva. When I have the ekatva within my true nature, there is a beautiful thing in the universe. There is no duality. It's me and me and me only. That's it. So, putgal, matter particle, they have no brain. So we are not going to worry about them. Now, of course, we can talk more about them also, but we, that's not the subject right now. Dharmastikai, Adharmastikai, Akash and Kal, medium of motion, medium of race, space and time, they are pure by themselves. They never look anywhere else. They remain pure. And because they remain pure, because they remain within their own nature, that's why they are beautiful. Soul, transmigratory soul like us, having the interest in the alien objects and the matter particle, they are also in a, a, a impure form. So those are not beautiful thing at all. Let's see what it says. Innate form or deluded form, substance remains in its own existence. Now I'm in the innate form right now or I'm in the deluded form, but my own existence remains the same. Deluded form is associated with the misery. Deluded form, when I have the duality, when I'm looking at the uh, 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 alien being, I, I, I direct my attention to alien being, then there's duality and that produces misery. What misery am I getting it? I'm hungry. I get a food. Fantastic food is given to me. I ate. I'm happy. Where is the where is the misery over here? Well, if the food was making me happy, then more food should make me more happy. And no, that doesn't happen. 
because after eating so much, then I said, no, I can't take it no more because the same food which was giving me happiness now doesn't give me happiness. So it produces misery. Now, as I said, the, the, the soul in its innate form, soul and growth within, it's called non-duality, it's called true self, and that is beautiful. Same way, in the matter particle, atom, atomic particle, the pudgal parmanu, the smallest possible part, let's say, Let's take this uh, 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 cube over here. I take this cube and I break into two and have another, another two pieces, another two pieces. And finally, a point comes in which I cannot divide further. That is called atomic particle. It is called Pudgal Parmanu. And that is not the same as a science uh, uh, atom. Science atom has a, a, a neutron, proton, electrons, so all kind of thing. Proton and proton also has uh, quarks and everything. So uh, Jainism uh, atomic particle is way far microscopic than science particle. So science also knows atom also has lots of other particles inside. So Jainism does not co co collude with the uh, science. In fact, Jainism leads science to the right thing. So the atomic particle in the free form is a pure. And because the atomic particle means pudgal particle, means matter particle, they have touch, taste, smell, and all those attributes are there. Touch attribute is there. Because of touch attribute, one atomic particle will combine with the second atomic particle and they'll become two in nature. Then three and four and five and millions of atomic particles get together and it becomes a great molecule. And this is the diluted form of the matter particle. So soul's diluted form is to just look into the alien belonging to draw the attention of the alien belonging. And uh, but soul's true form is to look within non-duality state. Same way atomic particle is a pure form of form matter. But when they are aggregate molecule, there is an impure form. So out of six substances, only soul and matter, have, they have capacity to be the deluded form in this pattern. So now he's coming to the third stanza, in second stanza, second, third stanza, what he says, that this duality is there because uh, I have directed my attention to the uh, alien belonging. Now, bijani sathe bandhani katha means bonded with the alien belonging. I have the attention drawn to the alien belonging. That's a bondage. Say a soul ends up with bondage as a, as a result of fruition of material karma. This is reprehensible, it's deceiving, and it's contrariety. So this is not right. So in third stanza, he says these are not a right thing that we are in. This makes soul as non-self entity means anatma. Second stanza was a swasamai parsamai. In the third stanza. Person is a bad, that's what he Acharya Bhagavan said. Now he talks about fourth stanza. What is fourth stanza talking to us? Fourth stanza says, since time infinite transmigrated soul has heard, familiarized, and experienced the story of the inclination of attachment. Since time infinite, when I was in Nigo, slowest possible form of life, or now I'm the five sense sentient being, my I have experienced familiarize, heard the stories, everything about inclusion of attachment and aversion. Rag and Dvesh, that's all I kept on doing. Even I was one sense life or I'm a five sense human being, it doesn't make any difference. I have a, I have a inclusion of attachment to the alien objects. I enjoy them and having bondage occurs due to that uh, association. That's called Kam Bhog Bandhani Katha. It's called Kam Bhog Bandhani Katha. We'll just talk that one quickly. Uh, 
objects of touch and taste are uh, 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 taste as influence of attachment is called calm. Object of touch and taste, first two senses. That's called influence of attachment. It is called calm. And bog means smell, seeing, and hearing is a called uh, bog. So calm and bog means all the five senses are included. Objects of all the five senses are calm and bog. Transmigratory soul has heard, familiarized with this influence of attachment and enjoyed them since time infinite. When I was in a one sense life, I was the lowest form of life or five sense human being. I am just I'm just got engrossed with a influence of attachment of calm and woe, all the five senses. That's all I have kept on doing since time infinite. And they, these living beings have created habit of this reflective thoughts of auspicious and inauspicious inclination. Means I like this, I don't like this, I enjoy this, I hate this. This kind of reflective thought, this kind of vikalp gnan, this kind of uh, uh, reflective thought in the sense thinking about it, thinking about it, likes and dislike, likes and dislike. Think about it. Since morning till night, now, how many things I, I did? Only two things I did. Either I like something or I didn't like something. When I'm hungry, I didn't like it. When I ate, I liked it. When I took a nap, I liked it. When I do wake up from the nap, nap prematurely, I didn't like it. So likes and dislikes, likes and dislikes. That's all I kept on doing. Since time infinite, I keep on doing. Since time infinite, I keep on doing likes and dislikes. Therefore, therefore, it is easy for me to attain this state. A child is born. Child doesn't walk right now. Then slowly, he just starts walking. It's, it, it's kind of a very effort for the child to stand up even. This toddler tries to stand up and falls down several times. Then he has to take a support and gradually he attains a strength and now he can stand up, walk, run without any support. In the beginning it was difficult. Similarly what has happened over here? Since time infinite I keep on doing ragdwes, 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 all the time I keep on doing it. Now it has become second nature for me. And if I don't do it then I said, Wait a second, I'm supposed to do like this. Why am I not doing it? So that kind of thing has become second nature for me. So the soul has never heard the separateness of the soul from the inclinations and oneness with the innate form. Now, Acharya Bhagwan says, this soul has never heard this uh, 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 story of staying away from Ragvesh and to go into the innate nature. You mean, I have never heard it? We are talking right now. This is revision we are doing. We have done this one for very, very deep study and everything. You mean, we never heard it? Acharya Bhagavan says, no, because you have not familiarized and experienced that state. Acharya Bhagavan says, I talked to you about the innate nature of the soul. You heard about it, but did you practice? Did you experience? When you're not experienced, that means not you have not even heard the story. You know that's what he says. So then, Padmanandi Panchamani Muniraj says that priti priti chitte na ye na varta pihi sruta nishchitam se bhavet bhavya bhavi nirvana bhajanam. What it means? It means one has listened. Carefully, the story of eternal innate nature of the soul, separate from the inclination of attachment. This living being is a potential soul, means Bhavya Jeev, and he will obtain liberation in a short time. Look at the Acharya Bhagwan, how much confidence he puts on us. He says, If you have heard this, this Samaisar, you hear this one. And you put into the action your influence of attachment, it will 
go away by itself. You don't have to make any effort to throw them out. I don't have to say, I want to remove my rag and this. I want to remove my rag. No, it, it, it will never go away that way. Only thing, if I just look within myself with the innate nature, then rag waste automatically starts going away and that Acharya Bhagavan says it's a, uh, it's a potential soul, it's a Bhavya Jeev and he is going to get a liberation in a short time. So this is the, in the past I have known the nature of the eternal pure soul but was in the form of retention of knowledge perspective. It was just on the intellectual level only. Remember how many times we all went to Samosaran, Bhagwan Samosaran? We all went infinite times. Infinite, infinite times. In Bhagwan is a best guru. Why nothing happened to me? Why only Gautam Swami listened listen once only and he had a, 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 a Manapari Gnan and everything and uh, he was that close to get a Skewal Gnan. And I went infinite time and came back. Yes, because everything what I heard was retention of knowledge perspective. Dharana Gnan, only intellectual level. I never put it to my heart. Knew the fact in the reflective thoughts only. This fact was known only in reflective thoughts. Now, beyond the reflective thought, once one, one, when one goes, then he obtains the Samyak Darshan, which I never tried to go out. Never did discrimination between reflective thought and eternal pure nature of the soul. So far, I have never done. That's why I don't have Samyak Darshan. That's why I'm hanging around over here. Therefore, never experience the innate nature. So this is the reason I have done rag this, rag this, rag this so much, so much, so much for so so for time infinite. They become second nature, and my true nature I have not experienced because I have not paid attention there. So, Sri Kunkunachara Dev says that I'm going to tell you the story of the eternal true nature of the self, separate from the alien belongings. So he says, okay, 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 you have not heard the story. Don't worry about it. It's not too late. I'm going to tell you all those things. Listen carefully. Then he starts with the stanza five that way. And in the stanza five, he says, Asya Bhagwan says, therefore I'm going to show the nature of the soul, which is solitariness, uh, solitariness of its own and separateness from all alien belongings. That's what I'm going to show you right now. Means I'm going to show you Ekatva Vibhakta Atmano Shwaru. I'm going to show you the solitariness of my own nature and separateness from all alien belonging. So those things I'm going to show you. Yes. How is that different from the Ekatva Nishche in Gata 3? Which Gata? How is the concept of Ekatva Vibhakta Atma different from the concept of Ekatva Nishche? as described in Gata 3. Okay. Ekatva Nishay means pure nature of the soul only. And then, no, 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 oh, sorry, oh, hold it, hold it. Ekatva Nishay means I have made solitariness with the alien object since time infinite. And that was Ekatva Nishay Gata Samaya Sarvatra Sundar Lokma Tethi Bane Vikavadini Sabandhan Kathavita Yogma. So there I have made the uni uh, 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 solitariness with the alien objects. So see, see what Ekatva is, and again, the next, uh, within two or three slides, it's coming now, what Ekatva means. What Kun Kun Swami wants to say, okay, Ekatva you have to do it, but with whom? With my true nature. I don't want to do ekatva with the alien objects. When I do the alien objects, I have my ekatva with this one. That means it is my transmigration. But same ekatva, now I bring it to my true nature. That means it's a end of the transmigration. Means uh, samyak darshan. And I'm, I'm keep on progressing further up. So, Ekatva nishchai gata samay sarvatra sundar lokama 
तेथी बने विकवादिनी बंधन कथा विद सो व्हाट व्हाट ही वाज ट्राइंग टू से देयर व्हेन आई हैड यूनिटरी सॉलिटरी नेस विद द एलियन ऑब्जेक्ट दैट इज बैड बट व्हेन आई मेक सॉलिटरी नेस विद माय ओन सेल्फ देन इट्स अ परफेक्ट थिंग दैट्स व्हाट एकत्व निश्चय दैट ही ही वाज ट्राइंग टू से देयर यू नो now over here ekatva and vibhakta atma ekatva means yes i'm going to show you from uh, affirmative point of view i'm going to show you the solitariness with the true nature and from a negative perspective i'm going to say remove your attachment from the alien objects so a positive affirmation ekatva with the soul negative affirmation giving up my rag and dwesh so i'm going to show the grandeur of the innate nature of this eternal soul full of knowledge vitality and super senses please and this is what i'm going to show you that he says he is ignoring he is ignoring the glorification of the universal alien objects as well as auspices in auspices inclination remember i mean there is a glorification of the universal alien objects too Can in fifty years back, seventy five, hundred years back, people did not know that one can fly, and now you can go all the way to the moon and different places, or all kind of things. You can go from point A to point B just like that. You can move. So these are the glorification of the universal objects. As 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 early as last thirty years time, we can take it. There was no computer. Thirty years back, if we are talking, I'll be in New, uh, Phoenix. You'll be in New York. You won't be here now. We we have the uh, uh, computer and we can talk to each other as if we are sitting to each other in, in one room only. That's an alien object's glorification. But Acharya Bhagwan says, "Are you impressed with those alien objects? Then think about how much strong, how much strength you have within you." who knows all this thing who has created all those things so he just says i'm going to ignore all those auspices in auspices inclination and glorification of the universal objects i'm telling you not only because omniscient lord has said so but my own experience also about about this one and i'm going to tell you innate nature of the eternal soul that's what kun kun swami tells us He is. He is a saying means reflective thoughts. I'm talking. I'm thinking. I'm presenting reflective thought. He strongly believes that these reflective thoughts are are also not the real nature of the eternal soul. Real nature of the eternal soul is self experiencing, going beyond the reflective thought, getting engrossed within my true nature of the self, primary. abstract comprehension nirvikalpta i went to the party and i enjoyed the party thoroughly while i'm enjoying i'm i'm just simply enjoying i like like i like the music i like my friends i like food i like drinks all kind of things i like it i like decor and all kind of things then at the time i'm enjoying it now when i come home and my son asked me my my wife asked how was the party described now i'm describing in a reflective thoughts i'm describing the whole party completely exactly what was it what was not there what was what was the best thing and all the i'm just at the, the description is called reflective thoughts and that is not the enjoyment of the party just by listening to that you won't enjoy you want to enjoy you have to be there too so over here kunkun swami said that i enjoyed my inner nature i enjoyed it now i'm describing to you describing doesn't mean anything to me because i had to come out of my experiencing phase so experiencing phase is most important description means a reflective thought means still it is not the uh, uh, real nature of the soul furthermore he gives instruction to the listener he now wants the listener that they should hear decide themselves and with comprehensive knowledge accept the message and thereafter to 
experience the innate nature of the eternal soul. One time Guru Dev Kanji Swami is sitting and he's talking and uh, uh, Himad Bhai, the one who translated all this literature, he's talk, he's, he's also enjoying Guru Dev's uh, uh, discussion, everything. And then Himad Bhai said, uh, Himad Mama we call him, that uh, he was a Ben Ben's brother. So that's why Ben Ben we call him Mataji. So his brother, uh, her brother is a him, uh, Himad Bhai, so we call him uh, Mama. The Himad Mama said to Gurudev, Gurudev, you are talking and you are enjoying your talk. It appears as if you are eating the sweet from the, uh, from the dabba, from the container. So Gurudev said, container is open. You can also start eating the sweet. You can also have the enjoyment the same way. Means I have the experience of my true nature. And I'm from my experience, I'm talking from my experience. If you enjoy that one, get the experience yourself also. And that will be the real understanding, real listening of the scripture from your perspective. Now, what's the response of the listener? To listen with the utmost in attention. Understand with comprehensive knowledge means pramanjnan means to know this nature of the soul from all different angles. What is the substantial perspective? What's the infinite attribute means? What's the unity of infinite attribute means? What is the modal perspective? How much? How long the mode lives? What's the origination of the mode? What's the cessation of the mode? What's the constant? All those things. I have to understand the comprehensive knowledge. Then to experience the innate nature of the soul. Now that I know exactly my nature of the soul, then I experience my nature of the soul. Not to keep knowledge for retention purpose. Not to keep knowledge only for the sake of knowing only. So what a big deal. This telephone is a portable thing. And it has a tremendous capacity of retention of knowledge. Whatever I need telephone number of anybody, it can give me. Whatever email I want to see, it can give me. But it's a retention of knowledge. It is not going into action. So if I'm also having the retention of knowledge from the intellectual aspect only, and not to get engrossed within myself, then all this knowledge is useless. Final acceptance of the discourse occurs to the listener when he experiences eternal true nature of the self devoid of any inclination of attachment and aversion. This is what is called responsibility of the listener. Listen, digest, action, experience. This is what uh, the, uh, this is what Guru wants me to do it. This is will this will be my total submission to the Guru if. I also experience my true nature of the self. So self-experiencing is important. Personal effort means purushat of self-experiencing of the eternal true nature of the soul is important for the aspirant soul. Self-experiencing is very, very important. That's where my personal effort should go. At this time, omniscient Lord, Holy Scripture, enlightened true teachers are present as an instrumental call. When I'm ready to go within my true nature of the self, Dev, Sastra, Guru are always present as instrumental cause. They are present. I don't have to go for looking for them. When I'm ready, they are there. So I, you know, I have to concentrate on myself. So Kun Kun Swami says, I want to impart the message that there are four things due to which he has obtained his internal grandeur of supersensuous bliss. With this inter internal grandeur, he is going to show the nature of the eternal self. It has unity with the self, a katva, and the word of influence of attachment means vibhakta. So here he comes that finally, uh, Kun Kun Swami says, listen, I'm going to talk to Ekatva Vibhakta, soul's nature. What is Ekatva? What is Vibhakta? That's what I'll be talking to you. Unity with the self is Ekatva. Unity with the self is Ekatva. 
infinite attributes and innumerable space points in indivisible form with the soul substance is ekatva. Vibhakta means devoid of alien attachments. Soul is separate from quasi karma, material karma, psychic karma, and also from its own mode because mode is transient in nature. Even though mode occurs within me, but transient. And my nature is not transient. My nature is eternal, true nature, immutable, persistent nature. And that's what my nature is. So even one, one mode of a, one semi also is not my nature. Here's so, the, yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Okay, that part confuses me. The, uh, the, the, the part about Yes. We have some darshan, so now we have Dravya Drasti. But even in Dravya Drasti, I don't understand what's going on. Yes. Okay, see what it is basically, uh, what you have to do, your experiencing is occurring in the mode. Experiencing or changes or Happiness, super sensuous bliss, rag, dvesh, anger, deceit, ego, greed, all those things are perceived in the mode only. Your, your innate nature is it's, it's immutable, it is no, never changing. So all the experiences are occurring in the mode. Now, now let's say that I'm, 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 my, my mode right now. Let's say 10 modes right now, one to, one to 10 modes. And number one mode, I'm looking outside. Number two mode, alien attachment. Number three modes, alien attachment. Number four mode, alien. Number five mode, number five mode has drawn the attention to the innate nature. Who brought that one? Mode did that. What did this mode do? What did this pariyai do? It experienced the innate nature. Until now, I was experiencing rag and dvesh. Instead of that, now in number five mode, I experienced super sensuous bliss. How did I do it? Through my mode. But what did mode do it? Look at my innate nature. So innate nature is more important then the mode, mode becomes secondary over here. Even though experience occurs in the mode, it becomes secondary. Now, we'll go one step further because this is very, very delicate point. And you are right, having, you are right at raising that question. That means you are thinking along that why this is happening. I cannot understand because there is an explanation given in the scripture. See, uh, mode, Think about it, the, the, the Gnan is a mirror. The, the, the knowledge, knowledge is a mirror. This mirror reflects everything from outside object. If there is a lion standing, it will show lion. If there is a fire, it will show fire. It will just show garbage, it will show garbage. Whatever is there, the, 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 the knowledge mode reflects outside material things. At the same time, the same mirror, same mirror also reflects the eternal true nature of the self also. So what am I, in my present mode of knowledge, what am I experiencing? The innate nature is also getting experience. I mean, so it is a reflector upon and all outside alien objects are also reflected. Now, when I have both, because my knowledge has a swapper prakashak capacity, it has capacity to know the self and alien things, both the things. So that's why this mode is reflecting the alien object. Also, it reflects the, my true nature. Now, I have my attention drawn to the alien objects all the time. That's why I do not see my experience, my true nature in the, uh, in, this, in the same mode. As we said that example, quickly we'll just go through that. 
child is crying and crying because he, he got hurt and everything. He's screaming with the pain and everything brought to doctor and they are trying to take the stitches, whatever. And it is not possible because child is thrashing and everything. So doctor says, call his mother. Mother comes. Mother takes the child in the lab. And the child is still screaming with the pain, everything. And mother starts talking and starts showing her respect, uh, her uh, attention to the child and everything. And also mother gives candy, lollipop to the child and everything. And now the child starts talking to mother. Mom, this thing happened. I fell down. I go to her. Whatever, whatever. So now he becomes quiet. And doctor took care of the stitches and everything. Now, think about it. Moment before he's screaming with the pain continuously because pain is there. Now the mother comes and his attention is drawn to mother. You mean at that time he does not have pain? He has a pain, but now his attention is drawn away. Same thing. When I'm looking at the alien objects, then I don't have my, my vision towards my innate nature, which is reflecting in my mood. So, if reflection occurs in the mood, action occurs in the mood, all those things occur in the mood, only the thing are to say, where do I do, uh, have a draw my attention? So when I draw my attention to the alien, uh, to the innate nature, when I draw my attention to innate nature, drawing, drawing, drawing the attention means my mood. Action occurs in the mood. But mood says, I'm not important. Important thing is this guy. Eternal true nature is most important. So mode itself makes itself secondary. Even though all these actions occur in the mode. So that's what it is, you know. So now, over here, when we say devoid of alien attachment means quasi-karma, we understand that part. Material karma understand. Psychic for karma also understand. But from his own mode means I, everything occurs in my mood, but my attention is now towards the uh, innate form only. Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is very delicate point, you know, and this is the crux of the thing that uh, that's uh, you know, if we understand, and again, if you if there is more question, we will do it because you know this is very 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 important thing because whole this is the very first brick we are the initial bricks we are putting it in and we are going to have our whole empire go on this a whole empire and a whole building will be created because this thing has to be clear in my mind what exactly it means you know so let's see the next quick now pure nature of the soul means I'm going to show you ekatva means indivisibility with its own you know, natural innate form. And vibhakta means separateness from the alien objects. Now, what are alien objects? Separation means what? Means ekatva means unity with the alien objects. Mamatva means sense of ownership of alien objects. Kartutva means belief that I am the doer. And Bhoktrutva means believe that I can enjoy alien objects. If I can digest this slide, I am I'm ready to go further on the Samisar because this is the Ekatva Vibhakta. Remember, uh, Ankit, your question. Ekatva comes here also. Ekatva comes here. But Ekatva means indivisibility with the innate nature. Innate nature, indivisibility. This is Ekatva word used over here. When Vibhakta means Body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. That kind of form, unity with my ob alien object means my body. Mama, so yes. data, data three is, number, is the top and data five is the bottom. Yeah, yeah, but the, the other one, yeah, the third, third, you said, right? Third, yeah. This is the fifth stanza. So there are two ekatvas coming. So this is the with the natural innate form. Vibhakta means you need to be there. No, I don't follow. What my question specifically is ekatva nischay. That's referring to path number one, the purple box on top, correct? Yeah, this one you mean. That's ekatva nischay. Yeah, ekatva nischay is over here. Yes. And that's path number two. Yeah. Okay. So 
This ekatva means body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. Mamatva means I can take care of the body's function. I can be, uh, I can keep my body weight perfectly normal. I can keep my heart rate normal. I can control my diabetes, my sugar. Can, so mamatva with my body, the sense of ownership. Kartutva means I can do something. You are sitting in New York. I'm sitting where because of me, I can, I can, all those things is a kartutva. It's because I am doer. I'm the doer. I'm the doer that way. And Voktrutva means I enjoy the fruits of my labor. I enjoy it when I do the rag and dvesh, I become happy or unhappy. So these are the vibhakta atma. So there are, we, 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 next time when we meet, we'll just say, what, what are the stanzas over here in the samisa which reflects all these four st steps? And this one is a central theme, is my pure nature. And that's what we have to continue to think about it. And so, uh, this one we already know, this one, Acharya Agam Nusevan, Yukti Nualamban, Parampara Guru Nubdesh, and Swa Samvedan, means the scripture, the logic, the, uh, the, the guru in the uh, lineage, and my self-experience, these three things are uh, instrumental cause, this is my right, uh, this is my true nature, and then he said, Yes. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? Yes. Is item one, two, and three Bear Shastra Guru? Um, you can, this is the, uh, 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 this is Shastra, this is Guru, and this is the Yukti. Acharya Agam Nusivan, the Dev will come over here also. Omniscient Lord's message and, Omni, uh, and the further Acharya. So Dev and Guru are over here. And this is the Shastra will be over here. Plus, he's putting logic also. And we, as we talked the uh, other day, logic in detail means it's an indirect knowledge. But I read the scripture. From reading the scripture, I try to understand. By listening to the lectures, I try to understand my nature. So that's called logic. And so with those things, then finally, when I obtain my Swasambhya, then means self-experience, that is most important. Then we are coming, that he said that uh, once you listen to these things, then experience and then find it out, Pratyaksa Praman, means now you understand everything when you experience. Right now we are doing everything in indirect fashion. Somebody said, somebody had a Kunkun Swamida experience, he wrote down, and Amritsandra Charya Dev also gave the description, and then Guru Dev wrote down, and then we learned from them. We are taught, all these things are indirect thing, but when I have the self experience, then it will be the right thing. Further, he says, if there is any grammatical mistake, just ignore those things that we have already. self experience is a principal thing to consider. Take home message, one must experience eternal true nature of the self. That's it. So basically what we have to do is first, all these five stanzas. First, invocation blessing. Second is uh, uh, um, Swasamai Parsamai. Third was Parsamai is uh, 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 Swasamai Parsamai. In the third one is uh, basically, let me read that uh, uh, stanza. Ekatva Nishay Gatsa. Means if it is a pure nature of the soul, that is the most beautiful thing. And that's a ekatva nishe gata samay. And when I'm getting mixed up with the other thing, that's a wrong thing. So that's the third stanza. Fourth one, it says, because I did all these things time and time and time and time again and again and again and again. That's why I rag and waste, it becomes second nature for me. And fifth stanza, he says, now I'm going to tell you from my experience that what is the right thing. Ekatva vibhakta atma. Ekatva atma means unity with the soul and vibhakta means ekatva mamatva kartudva bhoktrutva. I will tell you how to, how to separate those things. So having said that, and now that we understand where I am, then next time onwards, I'll be able to understand better. Because as I said, this is six stanza is a very important and some of the things uh, 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 Chirag already uh, uh, touched that one and it will be coming a lot more in the six stanza onwards. And uh, so, so we'll know it, okay? 
So now, uh, let's see. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, we'll close and then I have a couple of announcements to do. So no questions so far, none? Anybody? Uh, let's see, nobody. Everything is clear. Huh? Everything is clear. Everything, okay. That's good. Then. I'm not wrong. Okay. Okay. So let's just say closing right now. Sarva Mangala Mangalyam Sarva Kalyana Karakam Pradhanam Sarva Dharmanam Jainam Jaitu Sasanam Jainam Jaitu Sasanam Javani Ke Gyan Se Suje Loka Lo Sovani Mastaka Namo Sada Deta Udhok No one no more Thank you. More in time. Thank you very much, everybody. Um,